I love that guy. He's such a nice dude. Uh, Craig Ferguson? No. Brunch! Hit it, boys! Is summer over? Yeah, it's springtime, baby. Oh, worst season. Uh, yeah, I woke up to a text on Saturday, I want to say. I've been getting on you about bring that bit back. Yeah, the the bit that I don't know when season starts and when they end. But it's uh, always spring's fault. It is always spring's fault. Anytime the weather sucks, it's spring's fault. That's uh, that's going to be my new bit. It's like anytime there's like the sh- like a shitty day of weather, fucking spring. When that all happened, that's what I was explaining. To, I don't think you saw it in the moment. I was like, this is what you're doing every time. You're, if, if you don't like uh, the weather that day, you're like, this is why spring sucks, because sometimes this day happens during spring. Ugh. And you guys like spring? Well, I mean, I, I still stand by the fact that spring sucks. It's it's more overall disgusting than any other season. Uh, Allergies-wise, definitely. But, but I like, don't... when the snow thaws and, like, everything is wet and muddy and, like, all icky. the, all, like, the, the trees aren't fully back yet, it's like a... It's like a deformed season. It's a little like AMC bathroomy, <laughs> just, just wet like, on the ground. Little bit of you don't know if it's piss or if it's just water. Nobody's washing their hands yet. Everything's <laughs> wet. Yeah. There's just water absolutely everywhere. Um, I think I said recently, July is my twelve of twelve month, but I don't know if summer is necessarily the worst season. I've been this. I, I just. I mean, I know that you don't like like the the real hot and you have no i actually do seasonal depression so i do like when it's very hot like if there's like a if it's like 90 and up i'm like yo it's gonna be so easy to break a sweat rollerblading today i'm gonna get out there for two seconds then i'm all done yeah as a guy who likes rollerblading and sailing summer should be your favorite season yeah, sit man. I was on my sail bullshit this year. You saw the fruits of my labor. Uh, I rocked my sailing hat. I can't remember if I explained this on the podcast, but I've told the story to a million people, so I assume I've said it on the podcast. Where my friend's hat is faded, and he said it's because he just wore it one summer while sailing. So from then on, I was like, okay, I'm wearing the same hat every time we go sailing, and it was down to a navy chargers hat. Or, and I knew it wasn't going to be that because it was going to be this next one, a fucking Texas hat. Yeah. Fading burnt orange. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I do think that nav- fav- faded navy is still a good look, and like with, especially with the Chargers. Yeah. Because was it the old school logo? They or is were, it the new one? It's all over. Uh, this was uh, an old – this was like when the, when the logo – was the helmet, helmet. Yes. yeah so that would have looked good too because it would have looked like just an old hat mm-hmm. um and you know i'm not like a big dad hat guy but dad like faded dad hats if you're gonna be a dad hat guy like don't be a new dad hat guy be a, like i've had this hat forever and it's seen some shit that's a good look i've really from like the early days of this podcast i never was but i'm just pretty firmly entrenched in like having to do dad hats I don't know if it's the shape of my head or what. I tossed on a hat like that the other day, watch on Spotify or YouTube, and right. with my short hair or my rhinoceros nose or whatever it is, I was like, this just doesn't look as good. But if, if my hair is long, and I, I, if my hair is long, I can't wear a dad hat. That looks wimpy. It's like when you're wearing a small belt. It just looks like you have small other stuff. Uh, but long hair with a nice structured hat very nice touch yeah i i don't know i haven't yet decided what kind of hat person i am i'm just like an every hat person that's give, great i give every hat a run tom brady answer <laughs> that's right the next my, one yeah my favorite hat is the next one although like i wish that i did have a specific hat because i would be able to cut down my hat, per- baby. hat yeah i would be cutting down my hat uh collection by quite a bit and i don't wear like 80 percent of the hats that i own that's i mean like 95 percent of the hats i own I know that a lot of guys have a lot of hats, and some men or women, anybody, will hear this and be like, please, amateurs. But I think that you and I have to have the, excluding like collectors, you and I have the most hats of any two friends in the world. 
I think that's probably true. Yeah. Like there would be some if the, again, like if there is like you want to tell me like Steve Dangle like collects. <laughs> he's got some hat collector energy to him. Yeah. Then sure, maybe him and one of his boys, but I think that as I think he likes toys more than hats. You know what I like? What? Steve Dangle. Yeah. What? I you watch done his, a 180 on that guy. I didn't I never didn't like him. Uh, I was just like that is for me. Fun, you liked making fun no, of him. No, yeah, I was like this guy rocks. I don't it's not for me, but this guy rocks. Yeah. But it's becoming it, it just is more and more for me. Every now and then he tweets his video of when he left Sportsnet and I watch it every time in full. Oh yeah, yeah, with his YouTube video, yeah. It's like what it's like the uh Craig Ferguson I'm not making fun of Britney Spears video just True. every now and then I need to pull it up. <laughs> I don't know why this one speaks to me the same way that that did. I love that guy. He's such a nice dude. Uh, Craig Ferguson? Was, no, uh, Steve Dangle. You don't think Craig Ferguson's a nice dude? I'm sure he's, he's not making a, fun I'm of Britney sure, Spears anymore. I'm sure he's a great guy. Uh, I hung out with Steve he in, in Nashville, and he got slapped the hardest I've ever seen somebody get slapped. That was him who got slapped. It was yes. like a gunshot. Wow. It was crazy. I would, I'd posit a gunshot is more like a, like if he got, it would be different if he got shot with a gun. It probably would be, but... It's probably not as uh, as drastic a drop off as you would think. I was there. I heard that slap. It was fucking loud. How could she slap? <laughs> That's right. It sounds dangerous, uh, and we're going to be getting dangerous this weekend. Boston folks, or New England folks, or I'll just say it, North American folks. Yeah, you can travel for this. Don't come from across the pond, but this weekend is Idle Hands' is Oktoberfest, which is uh, one of the more fun events around Boston every year. We're both participating in it again. Uh, Pete will be in the dunk tank. I am out of the dunk tank. And Congratulations. Th- what you've, do you mean? You've been only been trying since you tore your ACL. Not true. I've always been more than happy to do the dunk tank. Sure. Very, very graciously go to Josh at Idle Hands and say, hey, let me know when you're Please filling out the tank, the tank, people. Tank. I, want, I want back in. I like doing it. It is a lovely, super fun event. This, uh, We're going to get Josh on the horn in a second, Josh Deering from Idle Hands, because he, A, just has given us a lifetime pass to do anything we want to do over there, which is great. But also, truly, this event rocks, and I know that it's a little, like, radio-y of us to be like we're gonna get somebody on and talk about the event see oh hey where can they get tickets and everything but truly this is just like a big hang and we want the uh, people to come and pete's gonna be in the tank that's true and uh idle hands to speak to dj and josh just letting us do whatever the hell we want one of the two drunkest episodes of brunch in history was recorded smack dab in the middle of idle hands so really i'll call josh now like i want to get his memories yeah of some of i don't remember idle half of it moments all right uh, hold on one second we'll get him on the line cool hello josh hi how are you my friend dj b how you doing i'm doing great uh, i'm excellent pete is here hi josh as always hey, yes uh, you pumped for saturday my friend Oh, man, yeah. It's going to be the biggest and best event of the year. We've been planning for this event for a long time and thrilled that it's actually here and about to happen. Is there a rivalry with breweries and Oktoberfests? Because once I go to yours, I don't go to an... It's like a fantasy football league. It's the only one I do every year. And I go to yours, and then the next couple of weeks, people are like, hey, so-and-so is having their Oktoberfest. And I'm like, I'm pooped. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of feeling that way. Once we, like a few years ago, we were one of the only breweries doing Oktoberfest in the area. And now it seems like there's a million different Oktoberfests going on. So our goal is to always have the best one and to get a head start and everybody do it a week early and then make everybody try and match or exceed us. Well, do you have a, do you, how are you stepping up the game from last year? Because last year you had like a fucking marching band in the parking lot or whatever that was. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have that band this year, but what we do have is a polka band oh. that is absolutely going to tear it apart, and they're going to be on from 1.30 to 5.30. Before that, we have a classically trained opera singer who's been learning German drinking songs, who's going to do like an hour of these beautiful German drinking songs. And, of course, we have the headliner of the night, which I think you're familiar with, uh, one DJ Bean. Oh, my. It's very funny that you just said what the other music is going to be. Because I have some, like, truly, I have some fucking bullshit plans. <laughs> like, some real, like, the most, like, th- this might be the most 
DJ shit posty thing in the world, and it has it has taken everything for me to not tell Pete what I'm doing. I haven't told anybody uh, what I'm doing. It's taken so much work. I hope I'm. I, it's not even close to ready, and oh, we God. are like mere hours away from this event. I would be shitting my pants if I were in your position because like those two. Uh, people preceding you or bands preceding you sound incredible and they're like right for this <laughs> yes. event uh they, i've played at idle hands multiple times and another reason we wanted to have you on josh is like quickly to give a little uh bio on you josh was the producer for the adam jones show on 98.5 the sports hub uh, before going full-time to idle hands and i always thought it was cool anyway that uh jones knew a cool brewery person and then we became buds i thought it was cool that jones knew a cool person um and then we became buds and really you've got this kind of uh, correct me if i'm wrong i've been taking it this way and possibly abusing it open door policy with like the people that you fuck with whether it's us whether it's uh the mac and goo podcast who we fucking love it's like what do you have planned or what do you not have planned? What do you want to do? We have space. Execute it here. Like, your people will like us, and everybody has a good time. Yeah, I mean, that's the goal. I mean, I honestly believe you guys are massively talented, and the people I find massively talented, I want to have at the brewery as many times as possible and to get weird, get wild, and get people talking. And that's what you guys do. And that's DJ. That's what you do anytime you come and perform there is your show is always entertaining, and people always talk about it. So, I am absolutely thrilled to see what you have planned. I can't even imagine what it could be. I just know people are going to love it. Okay, well, let's talk about... We haven't talked about this on the actual podcast. Pete, you've referenced it a couple of times this episode. We did it for a bonus uh, content thing. Oh, that wasn't even a full episode? Discussed. Uh, yeah, we were like, how do we get the Patreon buzzing? <laughs> DJ got a crazy injury. Find out what it was on Patreon only. Uh, I don't think that... Y- you, for some reason, were like totally in the Idle Hands family yet, or maybe you were out of town or something? I was out of town at a friend's wedding. Oh, right. Yes. So you, oh my God, Josh. So neither Pete nor Josh were here for this. The first time I did the <laughs> dunk tank. And all right, the, the long and short of it is they have a dunk tank every year, which is like a big fucking event. And it's a big thing to get asked to do it. Uh, you pay a little bit of money to yep. get some throws, and it goes to charity, right? Yeah. There's such yes. a good video. That would have been so awkward if it wasn't for charity, and they, they, you were like, no, nah, we pocket that. <laughs> no, was, it goes right to me directly, yeah. yeah. There's such a good video of last year, me calling my shot against you, dunking you, but... And then doing the weirdest running but windmill But I did I've like a seen. windmill thing, and my shirt came up, and I looked so <laughs> stupid and fat. It's the worst video I was. I saw somebody saying the video. I was like, "Oh, I bet that will rock," and it looks uh, <laughs> terrible. Uh, anyway, my big memory is that uh, nobody got dunked for like forty-five minutes before I got in the tank, and then suddenly it was every, a cold tank. Somebody, no, like, like <laughs> suddenly everybody's accuracy turned up to ninety-nine. Well, that's out what I'm of saying. 100. I'm not saying the water was cold. I'm saying like it was just uh, the the. It's like the slot machine. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you're like, what the was this busted? This thing regulation. Yeah, and everybody's then, yeah, saving themselves for me. You did get crushed. There is, and I'll tell the story in a second, but there is anxiety when you're in the tank of what if nobody wants to dunk me? What if nobody wants to throw against me? And once you break past the like even like the three to five minute mark, you're like, okay, this wasn't embarrassing. Uh here's the the infamous dunk tank story though. I Josh wasn't there. Pete wasn't there. It was my first time doing the dunk tank. I had some big, what if nobody wants to dunk me phobia. Jones goes before me. uh, And he's like heckling the crowd. He's like, hey, Patriots stink. I like other football teams. (laughs) And he's in there for like five to ten minutes, which that's like a a decent figure. And I'm drinking because I'm nervous and also because I'm at this fun event. And... uh, by the time I get in there, I'm like pretty buzzed and I forget who it was at Idle Hands, but they kept replenishing me and they kept, I'm like drinking IPAs at a time while sitting in the tank. And I don't say this to brag. This is just how life worked out. 
I broke the fucking length in a dunk tank record by like 20 minutes at least. <laughs> I was in there for probably like a half hour. One of the times I fell in as I'm climbing back into the seat, my foot slips, I fall back into the water, and I get the craziest non contact injury in the world. <laughs> and as I pull myself back up, I start yelling very drunkenly, <laughs> tore my ACL, tore my ACL. Everyone's like, fucking DJ, this guy sucks. This guy no, loves you attention. didn't. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> They're like, oh, stupid fucking DJ. Let's keep dunking him or like drown him. <laughs> Hope he fucking dies. And every time I would fall back in, I had to like use my upper body to get myself back up. And every time I'd sit back down and be like, tore my ACL. And Giles was there. He was like, I don't think that you'd be like, okay, if you tore your ACL. Uh, I'm sure Giles was super sober. At this he point. was very <laughs> sober as well. It was very fine. Uh, the night continues. I get out of the dunk tank eventually, and I'm limping around. And David Byrne was playing a show in Boston that night. Giles and I had thought about doing it for a while. Tickets were really expensive. Didn't know what we should do. But by then, I was blackout drunk. <laughs> so I bought three <laughs> tickets for me, Giles, and his girlfriend, now fiance. Now was wife. Like, I'm sorry, now wife. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I was like... Uh, Oh shit, look where these came from. And I couldn't log in to get them, so I was screaming my password for anybody who could hear it. It's a whole fucking mess. We go, I smoke the most weed I've ever smoked in my life. And even drunk and high, Giles is like, hey, uh, something actually might be wrong with you because you are walking very funny. Next morning, I have to go do the Patriots pregame show. I did not make it a habit of showing up to work. Uh, like hungover or anything. I was always, I was generally pretty good about that. Uh, Ted Johnson immediately recognizes something is actually wrong with my knee. Uh, I get an MRI the next day, torn MCL. So like pretty fucking close. Yeah, not like a way more serious of an injury that you'd expect getting from a dunk tank. I was telling this story the other day because uh, Megan Ottolini is going in the dunk tank and she was like, how is it? And I was like, Ah, there's been mixed results over the years, <laughs> but I told that story and uh, I was like, it never felt so good to be told by a doctor, your knee is, t is shredded. Because I was like, I, yeah, <laughs> fucking bitches, yeah. I got that. Now, no, DJ, I, I heard a story from you that day and I, I thought, I didn't realize the injury occurred in the dunk tank. I heard a story where you're like running through the tap room to like the back closet area. And you didn't have shoes on after being in the dunk tank. And you just blew a tire and just spilled out. I mean, that definitely happened, too. I don't remember that part. <laughs> but the, the you just, like, crashed and burned in front of everybody. And I thought, I thought that was the time that you blew out your knee, not in the tank. So then, I mean, this makes even more sense you that i fell lot, there you have a lot of horror stories at idle no so like <laughs> doesn't it make sense though that i fell my knee was i was i, I started to run apparently on yeah one knee i get yeah probably like maybe a wet floor wet floor well, i mean it wasn't a wet floor his feet were wet because oh, he just came yes. out of the dunk tank and yeah. wasn't wearing shoes so <laughs> that's a man that knows how to save his ass he's like the floor yeah. wasn't wet it was, it was all a good you. floor <laughs> yeah, it was all bone dry but uh, and the, the a big part of this is and you just confirm my worst fears i was like josh is going to be told by the other people at idle hands who the fuck is this guy <laughs> that like your fucking friend that you brought Causing along to this thing and because you know the feeling of like if you get drunk and god forbid if you get blackout drunk where you're like fuck like did i how badly did i embarrass myself Couldn't i'm happier me. to injure myself than to embarrass myself or yes. to, not to embarrass myself like to make anybody have a bad time you want the reflection to be bad on you and not anybody else exactly like, I, did, I didn't want people to be like that thing wasn't that fun because like there were some loud dudes or whatever uh so i was afraid that you were going to be told like hey Never fucking bring that guy back. <laughs> and you were just oddly continued to be cool about like, yeah, whenever you want to come by and do stuff. So I don't know if you just have like way more power <laughs> there uh, and if you're going against people's wishes. But I felt very, very bad physically, obviously. But like, I felt like a fucking asshole after that. Well, I mean, I appreciate you not suing us to oblivion for that. So uh, thank you. Yeah. 
<laughs> and now you're not in the dunk tank, so you've you've graduated. Let's see how you hurt yeah, yourself you, playing music. It is worth noting, though. I've I've I went back in the dunk tank in years in the two more times. Years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Josh. Uh, one of the times, my first trip to Idle Hands, I believe, was when we recorded a podcast mm. inside the space, and that is a top two drunken podcast that we've ever done. Uh, with with how drunk we both got and boy it came kind of came out of nowhere what do you remember from us recording yeah what do you remember I mean, from us recording because we don't remember much the name of the episode folks, by the way is beer evan hansen if you're trying to remember like w- which one are they discussing yes yeah i was, I was trying, to, trying to remember that but I, I think dj like contacted me that day he's like oh i got this great idea for a podcast but we have to do it at a brewery <laughs> it's like some random night of the week too. It wasn't like Friday. Or so. It was like yeah, Tuesday it was, or Wednesday. It was a weekday, like, yeah. And uh, it like, had to be. A, it may have been like a Thursday because we we went to a, a bar and watched football afterwards. That's right. <laughs> and we lost a lot of many money betting on the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember I went to my boss. I'm like, yeah, uh, DJ and Pete Blackburn want to record their podcast here, and he's like, what do they need from us? I'm like, nothing. The table. Yeah, so I was like, uh, and to clarify, this isn't going to be like a live taping. There's not. Yeah. I don't want yeah. other people to hear it. As the episode goes on, they're probably going to hear it because we're just going to get really loud and insufferable. But uh, we just want to sit at a brewery with a recorder and podcast to each other yes. while drinking Many a bunch beers. of beer. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's about all I remember from the night. Like, like you guys are in the corner at a table talking and... All right, I was, was just, I was just curious and maybe a little afraid that we had caused a scene and been like super loud and everybody there heard the podcast. I mean, I'm no, trying, I'm trying to no, think. I don't think so. That I mean, really, all we were saying is probably just like reading our notes that we took during Dear Evan Hansen, talking about how old Ben Platt looked and how he did not look like a high schooler. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, that was a good one though. The thing though about like doing anything, and I've kind of learned my lesson over the years, is with a brewery, everything there is going to be really good, and there's a reason why they give like eight ounce options, mm-hmm. and that should always be the the play. And if if you, there's something there that you really enjoy, and maybe you're going to have one or something like that, go for the the big one and do that. But otherwise, like try to make a brewery about sampling versus like running the gamut. Would you would you say that's the play? I mean, I don't think that's the play at all, but hey, everybody has their own opinions. I think, you know, what we go for is to try and have a lot of options that are lower ABV. And then, you know, of course, people like you, they just go to the high ABV ones. <laughs> yeah, I was doing, uh, I mean, I was doing Slate, which I don't think is too... Oh, that's like 5%. Yeah, so I was on Slate when I was in the dunk tank, but I'd had, had... Uh, I was what... on Slate. But, but I, so I had maybe two or three of those in the tank. And every time I'd fall in the water, I would like hold it up so it wouldn't go under. Although I'm sure you probably <laughs> had sure so the... much dunk tank yeah, water in there. I'm sure, like I <laughs> remember to do that once, and the rest of the time I was just like pounding Jones's piss water. Um, <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> but before that, I mean, you guys do like a special October one, and uh, you guys have a lot of good stuff. I mean, my, my I say all the time, my favorite IPA in Boston is Four Seam. Hell yeah. I mean, it's the best one. That's why. Yeah. Four seam. I mean, six seems really good. Uh, change up. What's the Rattler you guys do? Oh, we did the Heidi Rattler, which is a lager and house made lemon soda. I, but brother, I was crushing those late uh, in the quarantine time. I would make the rounds yeah. and get beer from everybody that I could. And when you guys had those, I would just sit in my backyard and drink three million of those and then be like all right go back inside day's over those are perfect those are like nice three percent if that like oh those are awesome i do have to point out that uh last year's oktoberfest came after texas played alabama that afternoon they lost to bama but it was extremely close we were a little upset when we showed up at oktoberfest i think we we got it out of our system but this year texas is playing bama after Oktoberfest, there's a 7 p.m. start. So if they if they win this year, you're off the hook. But if they lose again, I think that like we have to officially blame you. Here's the problem, though. That's not after. That's fucking during. 
Yeah, that's right. During DJ that, sets, that, that's, that's, that's like true. when this like, fucking headlining. asshole is. Like, I was thinking, I, you're she's see, making plans just to not take in the set. That's it's, yeah. it's after I'm in the dunk tank, so it's after for me. Yeah. Well, when are you on? By the way, somebody asked. Five o'clock. Oh, you're on at five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about like rigging some sort of Texas watching situation near the stage, but I'm I'm gonna have I'm gonna have like a bunch of toys up there oh boy. like i'm gonna I, i'm gonna look maybe a little bit more like a dj than i usually am and I'm, so i'm like do i throw like so a you not your name like a, a disc jockey right do i throw like a an ipad up there that uh just has texas on there that'd be very fun and like the, some guy like with his girlfriend's like hey see what that is that's uh he's using that to control the uh he's using that to control like levels and stuff <laughs> and i'm just watching the texas game only you would be the person in the crowd that would be like, that's where he uses to control levels. And well, that's stuff. just something that people do. They'd be like, hey, what do you think that screen's for? <laughs> I think that's for. And you, know, it, it always, it, people will make it look like it's for other stuff. It's always lyrics. Yeah. It's just oh, yeah. always, they don't I know how the song goes. It's lyrics, yeah. yeah. The, a, a lot of the monitors that you see on stage, especially for like big acts, a lot of them are like fake and they're, uh, they're like screens. So they'll just have like a big thing to look like a wedge monitor, mm -hmm. but it's actually lyrics and uh, chords and stuff. Uh, are you after? So Jones is back in the dunk tank, Josh. He's a big time drive yes. time host now. So now he can't plan vacations at the same time as uh, the Oktoberfest. He's got to go do some fucking like grassroots marketing <laughs> stuff and go meet people and say, hi, listen to my program. Yeah, both him and Mego are going to be there. It's like the 2 o'clock hour is dedicated to Jones and Mego in the tank. Ah, I like that. They've pissed off a lot of people in the past year, too. So that there could be some serious money in, in that tandem. Yeah, I hope so. That'd be awesome. The more people that want to dunk Jones, and he has a very dunkable personality. There's people sure. lining up to want to throw shit at him. But you know what? He's so, not to body shame, there's like not even a splash when he goes in the water. <laughs> Such a... <laughs> little he's like a leaf <laughs> he just it just he just sits on top <laughs> he floats yeah he doesn't go in <laughs> i mean that's jones. actually part of the reason we book him because we don't have to use as much water when he's in the tank we lose nothing exactly uh kevin lamanowitz too that's gonna be cool i don't think i've met uh the l dog yeah i mean he's he's been a big supporter of metal hands going back for years and uh one of the people that works at the brewery i was asking who do they want to see in the dunk tank he's like kevin lamanowitz the that, top three Kevins that are famous. That rocks. Levin Reed, who is is the Boston sports legend. It'd be awesome to see him. Haven't seen him in a million years. Last time I saw him was uh, before a uh, Patriots parade. We were looking for the duck boats, and then we both got uh, our, our phones went off, and we were like, the Bruins just fired Claude Julian. Oh, yes. Oh, my yeah. God. And we laughed about what fucking assholes they were That's for hilarious. doing it then. That's my uh, most recent... Levin Reed mm -hmm. experience, but that guy rocks. It's going to be an awesome time. And the best thing about Levin Reed is when he's in the dunk tank, you're going to be able to hear him like a mile away say, with that voice. He oh, has the most pipes. booming voice of all time. Just absolutely. It's a heavy voice. Do you think that he's going to... People are going to be riding by on the T wondering <laughs> where the voice of God is coming from. I'm going to be like, hey, Levin, here's the deal. I'm not going to pay to dunk you. I'm going to I'm gonna pay to dunk you, but I'm not going to throw... I want, in exchange for me donating this money, the whole day, call Jones a bitch for having a bitchy <laughs> voice. Make fun of his voice. Because Jones <laughs> otherwise has amazing pipes. Pete's got great pipes, too. A lot of people there, good pipes. Levin smokes everybody. Oh, okay, yeah, by far. We got to get, I mean, if you get, like, Scott for all, then, then that maybe will contend with it because he's got such a unique voice. But it's all about what the... What the person getting dunked is yelling at everybody so it's going to be a good time and uh we're pumped it's again i said earlier it's like the best fucking event every year the weather it's not going to rain knock on wood it did rain one time and that fucking sucked it was still a good event but it's good that you guys get good weather yeah we're gonna have good weather and if not we have a ton of tents and you know come out anyways i think there's a chance of rain but it's not gonna happen Kevin Lamanowitz will make sure it doesn't happen. That's right. That's right. Uh, I did invite. Uh, I invited uh, the weather guy from NBC Ten, Tevin Wooten, and I was like, "Hey, it's gonna be a big party. Come on out." And he was like, "I 
Texas is playing Alabama. I'm not going to go do some fucking listen to you play music. And I was like, God, that's kind of my answer, too. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, <laughs> Tell him to come hang out while I'm in the dunk tank, and then we could go watch Texas Bama together. No, this guy. So this guy is I knew that it was unlikely because he's such a big college football guy. I was like, I bet it is impossible to get this guy out of his apartment on Saturday. And he was like, I felt bad because he felt bad. And I was like, no, like a college football people, you know how they get. Yeah. They got to have their pops. All right. Well, Josh, we look forward to seeing you on Saturday. It's going to rock. I'm so excited for this whole thing. So come by, dunk, Pete, listen to my nonsense, meet some people. Overall, it's just a great hang. So I uh, hope everybody can make it. Yeah, thanks, guys, for having me on. I look forward to Saturday. It's going to be an awesome time. Hell yeah. Awesome. Thank you, brother. See you soon. Yeah, see you. Uh, he's the best. What a guy. Yeah. Uh, so that's Saturday. Pete is in at 2. I'm on. I'm in at 5. Oh, I'm sorry. Jones is 2. Pete's 5. I'm on somewhere post 6. They think they said 6.30, but uh, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a memorable uh, affair whether or not my performance is <laughs> anything. Just, just dunk Pete. Um, I have a thought that uh, crossed my mind in uh, the past couple of days. Do you have any favorite, um, like, traffic situations? Like, the way that traffic flows or just, like, any sort of... I know that your favorite car activity is going I was going to say, like, we know what the answer is. <laughs> That's true. Uh, outside of that, do you have any favorite traffic situation? Uh, I mean, I say beep, beep. Yep. And I say, what are we doing? I say vroom when we get to start to go. Yep. Uh, but that's that's really it. This crossed my mind because uh, the other day I was at a four-way stop. Mm. And I was just thinking to myself, I think a four-way stop mm -hmm. is just like the America that I want to live in. Mm -hmm. Where everybody respects each other. Everybody follows their turn. And it's just sort of like everybody governing themselves. Yeah, I told you the uh, a, gr a great one is when you're letting a person take a left and they point at you as they're doing it. That's yeah. such a good feeling. That is such a good feeling. It's like you made that person's day. I got so somebody made my day the other day. I'm gonna I'm 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 about to go sailing and I'm trying to park on the street because it's a Sunday. Normally I park for like twenty five dollars or whatever, but I'm like Let's try to grab some street parking. There's a guy. I'm go there's a guy on the other side of the road who appears to be leaving. I roll down the window and I say, Are you leaving? He said, Yup. So I put on my blinker and I'm like kind of waiting for him to go. And he said just said very nicely, Come back around. I'm waiting for you. I'm I'm, I'm waiting for you. And I was like, Are you serious? Wait, what? He said, so I was going to, like, cross a lane to go in and then kind of be an asshole to make sure I got the space. Yeah. And he said, basically, he said, the reason I'm still sitting here is because I want you to go turn where you can turn, and I'm holding this space for you. Wow. And I said, you are the best. That is unbelievable. And then, like, as he left... He, like, made sure that he, like, looked back at me and gave me, like, a nice little wave. That is truly unbelievable because I feel like most people who are, like, asked, like, hey, are you leaving? They get, like, all, like, like get pissy. Get off my dick. Yeah, they get pissy about it. They're like, yeah, fuck off. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, they'll, like, find a way to give it to anybody else except you. That's unbelievable. I was floored. It was so nice of him. It was a, just a little, uh, it was a random act of kindness. That's right. I mean, just do the small stuff, baby. Yeah, uh, I do. I haven't sang Schmohawk in the car a lot. Okay. <laughs> Which is obviously from. In uh, what context? Move it, Schmohawk. What's that from? Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, okay. So Larry David says his dad used to call people Schmohawks. And then every now and then if he's in the car, he'll be like, move it, Schmohawk. <laughs> uh I won't say necessarily move a schmohawk. I'll just be like, fucking schmohawks. And if like the drivers are really bad, I'll be like, it's some fucking schmohawks out here. You should call the Blackhawks that from now on. The schmohawks? <laughs> yeah. Should. They're probably going to sign Patrick Kane. And I heard the Red Wings might sign Patrick Kane. That would be 
That wouldn't be too Red Wingy. It would be like old Red Wingy. Just get some aging <laughs> old guys. Guys who are almost dead. But he's not Swedish. Yeah, true. Well, he's got the blonde hair though. That is he, true. He could pass for Swedish. And he plays hot. Not the way. Please, that guy doesn't pass ever. <laughs> that's not true. The puck hog he is. It's not true at all. He's always. That's what I'm going to bring back. I'm going to bring back calling uh, players like Huns and hogs pass the ball anybody who just scores a lot is a puck hog yeah lamar jackson takes off pass the ball <laughs> i had my first fantasy uh dynasty draft that we kicked off a dynasty league uh this year and i'm like not a fantasy football guy so like i ha usually have no interest in doing anything like that mm -hmm. like not i don't like committing to anything never mind a fucking fantasy league until i die um but I feel like I've been saying this a lot recently. Like, it's like with golf too. It's like any it's a, reason to hang out with my friends. With people, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was so. I did, I signed up for that because one of my good friends asked me, and I was like, "Listen, if I say no to this now because I'm like, oh fuck, fantasy football, I'm probably gonna regret it for like the next eight years." As all my friends talk about this when they're around me, and I have to be left out. So I signed up. Uh, the draft took like four and a half hours. It was brutal, but I am very excited about like running a team. I have never even considered doing a dynasty thing because I just – it's very pessimistic, but I'm like, we're not going to do this fucking forever. My friends will. We, I, 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 I'm, it's weird. I, so You've I've been, been in a fantasy league. I've been league. in a keeper league for uh, at least like 10, 12 years now that we all take as seriously today as we did the day that we started it. But for some reason when someone's like, I'm starting a dynasty league – I'm like, if you didn't start it like 20 years ago, just what's the That's fucking true. point? It's a weird, but I, but I feel like if I, if my friends had started it like 10, 15 years ago, I probably would have been kicked out of the league by now. Because like at, at some point in my life, I would have just been like, nah, fuck this. I don't care about this this year. Now I feel like I'm at the point where I'm going to care about it every year because I'm just going to like want to keep up those relationships. I was given the option to leave a basketball league. It was like the, it like wasn't a firing and it wasn't a quitting it was like uh a hey uh just so you know this life offers a lot of things <laughs> and uh are you happy in this league <laughs> are you which like now this kind of hits a little close to home, but it's like they uh, were asking you to leave well it was just like you're not enjoying like we know what dj is when dj is dj you're not bringing that to this league. Is it because you don't like the league? Is it just because you don't have time for it? Either way, you don't have to be doing it. And uh, it's totally okay if you leave. And I was like, I leave. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so correct on both accounts. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm not into it. Yeah, you can tell I'm not into it. Which sucks because, like, my friends are in it and I love basketball. But just for some reason... I just like wasn't. I can't really do any fantasy sport except for football. It's just it just the doesn't work thing for me. Doesn't work. Um, so let me ask you this. By the way, football season's around the corner. That's uh, right. Sign up for <laughs> DraftKings. Uh, no, let me ask you this: If a, I mean, this is probably putting the the cart before the horse since we haven't even started this dynasty league. But if a spot opens up, somebody quits. Would you be interested? The only thing that sucks is that you'd have to inherit their team. Uh, I would not. I okay. I turned down. I turn down fantasy leagues regularly. Yeah, same. I've only done one. I'm, I'm, this is the only league I do. So I do, uh, I'm in a fucked up league, mm -hmm. which is the best league. Yep, the, the kicker one. That's year to year, my fucked up kicker league. Uh, that This year I said that that was going to be the only fantasy league that I did because I don't really care about anything else other than that league. But then the dynasty thing came up. So now I'm in two leagues, probably going to be in two leagues forever. But like the dynasty league doesn't feel like upkeep because I'm going to have the same team basically i don't th i apologize if the worst part about getting old is you don't fucking remember if you've told a story before and i remember when i was a kid i would sit like at fenway and listen to especially like drunk people tell the same story a hundred times and be like yeah. dad what's wrong with these idiots mm -hmm. they like that story's not even that good and they tell it all the time so i apologize if i told this all i cared about in my league was getting Bijan robinson and I know I've told you this, so I'll yep. just tell on the bridge. I don't version. think that you've told it on I'll told it on the podcast. Okay, so there's a guy in our league, fucking Jordan. Uh <laughs> this league was started by a group of good friends, and uh one of the good friends 
and his twin brother were in the league. And uh, they brought some friends to the league, uh, or they brought one friend to the league that uh, none of us knew, but whatever. You, Any friend of, of Drew is a friend of ours. Uh, Drew and his brother, I love Drew, just not friends with him anymore. <laughs> uh, Drew and his brother, over a disagreement on whether uh, trading a rookie named New Hopkins and getting this is a keeper league and getting des bryant back was a fair trade uh they thought hey this is an this there's some collusion here who the fuck even is this new hopkins guy and all of us were like this is a fair trade the guy that got hopkins is going to be awesome in the coming years anyway it just became this huge disagreement these two brothers left the league and we don't talk to them anymore and their friend jordan who they brought into the league Remained in the league. He was like, I think it's a fair trade. It, it's, <laughs> it is exactly when uh, Leon's family leaves Larry. <laughs> yes. And Larry says to Leon, so what does this mean? And Leon says, this means I'm about to go in my room and eat this fucking Chinese food. <laughs> like, Jordan is still in the league. We don't know Jordan. Haven't met Jordan. And our relationship with Jordan is that he is a fucking asshole <laughs> and we hate him and he hates us and we're so mean to each other. It's a real standoff you got here. <laughs> and like, if I make a trade offer to him, he'll say something like, oh, we'll save your breath. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> wow. and, uh, then I'll text my friends and be like. I fucking, fucking hate prick. Jordan. Yeah. He was so fucking mean to me. And they'll be like, well, fuck, get, give it back. And I'll be like, okay, like, hey, Jordan, fuck you. <laughs> and he'll send back like a kissy face emoji, like, like, suck my. It's, so I this love is, this. So this is our relationship with Jordan. Uh, he's a real, he's like a squatter. And yeah, uh, by the way, like once or twice, it has come up. Like, do we kick Jordan out of the league? And I have fucking broken the table, pounding it to no. say, Jordan stays. Yeah, I, I would assume so, yeah. This is the, like, this is... You want personalities, and you want, like, rivalries in a league. Your league has, if a kicker misses a point, you lose 50 points. <laughs> like, this is our that on steroids. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, every every league needs, needs character. Mm -hmm. Like, the, it needs something, it needs, like, a defining characteristic. And your league... Is that you just fucking hate this guy. And we had a pretty staunch uh, Republican, which, like, back in the day, it's going to sound crazy. Like, not that it didn't matter. <laughs> We'd just be like, Nobody oh, really like one of my friends of Republican, and uh, I'm not. <laughs> and uh, every now and then I'll be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then, like, I don't know. Uh, this guy, though, was just like, as 2016 was happening and he was like getting all really into Trump, it was just like, Hey, like get out of the league, man. <laughs> or like, he didn't want to be in the league anymore. It was just like a butting heads thing. So like he left, but it was like, I am going to miss. And that's not like we got in big Trump arguments or whatever, but I was like, I'm going to miss like, this guy was like the, this fucking guy of the league. He was a character. And you yeah. need a, this fucking guy. You need characters in your league. Yeah. Uh, and we definitely do have characters in the league. We have uh, Jones is in it. Uh, I, I'm in it. And I'm like, well, somebody's always doing some sort of stupid fucking thing. Anyway, uh, so Jordan is very difficult. And my plan was, it's an auction league, get B. John Robinson. Mm -hmm. All I care about. And uh, I thought if Christian McCaffrey gets nominated first and he can be had for a reasonable price... I'll get him knowing that I can always trade him for Bijan and then maybe even get a little something back. So I get McCaffrey. Wouldn't you fucking know it? The only thing I didn't count on is Jordan was, getting Bijan. Was this an auction draft? Auction. Yeah. So you you got McCaffrey. Did McCaffrey go for more than Bijan? Uh, he ended up going for more than Bijan. Okay. Right. So in the end, I kind of overthought it. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Uh, Jordan gets Bijan, and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be annoying. But I, so I say, hey, uh, I'll give you 
you want to do McCaffrey for Bijan and something? He responded, nah. <laughs> so then the next day, I was like, all right, uh, McCaffrey for Bijan straight up, which every ranking, every person in the world has Christian McCaffrey as the number one running back this year. Bijan is like fun and he could be like the best rookie running back ever. Yeah. Uh, but obviously big unknown and he plays for a team called the Atlanta Falcons. Gross. And so I say, okay, you got me. McCaffrey for Bijan straight up. And Jordan says, and I know that I'm telling a fucking fantasy football story, but this isn't just a fantasy football it's story. It's not. This is a fucking human story. What else are we going to talk about? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I say, McCaffrey for Bijan straight up. And Jordan fucking writes back, if I wanted McCaffrey, I would have gotten McCaffrey. <laughs> I hate. I fucking love this guy. This fucking guy. <laughs> I think I love this so guy. <laughs> fucking much. Like, you were going to win the fucking trade, but just to be a fucking penis, you're just like, no, I wish I wanted to be. I kind of love he it. He did the. I love uh, it so much. If I wanted a Pepsi, I would have asked <laughs> yeah. for a Pepsi. I respect the hell out of this guy. So. I had done a lot of legwork on preparing to have a Bijan team. Yep. I thought of the best team name ever. Yeah. Which and I made a Photoshop for it, which is uh, it's Bijan Robinson standing in front of two cars, mm -hmm. and the name of the team is going to be Two Infinity and Bijan. <laughs> yep. Best Photoshop I've ever made in my it life. It was incredible. It, it was an incredible looks Photoshop. Great. Now I can't fucking have that team name because of fucking Jordan, and I'm not going to let Jordan have it. So I made my team name. I just put Christian McCaffrey on top of it, and it's to infinity and Christian. <laughs> but that sucks. So then I uh, mashed up. doesn't quite work as well. I will say that. So then I mashed up a dog and a rhinoceros and put that over everything else. And then I am my team is Dog Rhinoceros, and Fantasy Pros projects my team to come in last place. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's so tough. Which it would be even worse if I traded McCaffrey for Bichon. It'd be like, you're going to come in a millionth place. Yeah. But this just all sucks. So fantasy season, well, you gotta have football season's right around the corner. About, but yeah, you, your entire season got tanked before week one. Um, I, I In my auction league... Uh, everybody knows that I'm a Texas guy. So, like, as soon as Bijan was put up for auction, everyone was like, let's fuck with Pete. And he was the most expensive player in our league, in our auction, which, like, sort Should of does make sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, like, they drove me crazy because they just kept betting $1 above what I was going to bet because they knew that I was I wanted him so bad. I ended up paying like $130 for Bijan. And that's why I was tr that's what I was trying to avoid with all this. Especially like when McCaffrey went first and I kept bidding up McCaffrey. I think cuz pe people like my friends in my group text they were giving me such anxiety. I think they were doing this on purpose. Every time anything happened with anybody, they'd yeah. be like a bit like, "Oh, I'm not keeping so and so, so I got a few more dollars to spend on Bijan. Bijan's going for 150. Bijan uh, and I would like, it's like trying to text friends separately, being like, hey, uh, I don't know about you, but like, I think that like Bichon's going to suck. <laughs> also, don't get Quentin Johnson from the Chargers. <laughs> I didn't get Quentin Johnson from the Chargers either. Oh, no. I just, I'm sorry. I'm having a bad fucking time. Um, we're, we're, I didn't plan for this, but we did discuss it. We should like draft the, uh, the worst possible people to be in a fantasy league. And being Jordan, being the friend that nobody else knows or like the friend of a friend that nobody else knows is like the worst person to be in a fantasy league. Uh, it's just like nine close friends and then like some fucking acquaintance. It's the fucking uh, hold on. Let me find this. Uh, we came up with something. Here's an email. The name of the email is the Jordan rules. OK. We came up with something the night of the auction. So we all get together. Like friends come in, we we're a real fucking family, and we eat pizza. We watch draft day on loop, as yep. has been uh, discussed, discussed many times. Yes, uh, here's the rule that we came up with because Jordan uh, lives in Arizona. Okay, so this he's just got nothing. So to he's do not with even us. at the draft when you guys are all at the draft. No, we've never met him. <laughs> That's we've crazy. never met him. I don't know what he sounds like. 
Um, I, I won't lie. I pulled up his LinkedIn a couple <laughs> of times. Uh, all right. Here's the Jordan rule that we came up with. Okay. The last place finisher by record tiebreaker being points is responsible for flying jordan to boston for next year's auction they are also responsible for putting him up whether by getting him accommodations or hosting him (laughs) in the event that jordan finishes last jordan is responsible for bringing a member of the league of his choosing to wherever he is for the draft flights and accommodations will apply as they would in the aforementioned scenario jordan is not allowed to decline a potential trip if jordan comes in last place and does not follow the rules he'll be banished from the league thank you for your attention to this closed matter i mean i love that but i i think the thing that i love the most is that uh if Jordan comes in last, two people have to get punished. That's the scenario both we Jordan, all want. Both Jordan and some poor bastard. And Jones. <laughs> yeah. We think that we, we were discussing who we think he would send out. Jones? It would be Jones or it would be me. Okay. And I think Why? Because you guys are the two meanest to him? Not the... I mean, I don't think... You have the most fun with it? We're just... We're the... We're loud members of the league. Mm-hmm. And, uh... <laughs> like... Yeah, I could see him being like, you know what? If I'm going down, I'm taking everybody. But it would be funny. Like, you know, my friend Scott. Yeah. Scott really has never done anything to anybody. It would be kind of funny if Scott just had to fucking go to Siberia with Jordan and sit. Siberia. Like, I've never been to Arizona. I have. It's a good time. I have you been to Arizona? No, I've never depends been Depends what time or what, where he lives in Arizona. Yeah, well, you know what they say about the weather there? It's hot. It's a dry heat. You don't heat. like it. <laughs> it's a dry heat. Just if you don't like it, just like wait a few hours. That is that is what they say there. About Arizona. That's it's, right. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, did you see Bottoms? I did not because uh, tough to find. The I two didn't movies. see, uh, what's it called? That's not hard to find. You just have to pay $20 for it. I couldn't bring myself to do it, which is stupid because I I drop that bag all the time. Yeah, and uh, I so I, I dropped twenty dollars to watch Past Lives. I bought it from like digital on demand or whatever, and I'm so glad that I did it because I'm gonna watch that movie like sixteen times. Do you own it? I own that movie. So if you want to watch that movie, you could just come over and watch the movie. Maybe I'll do that. We've I never could also done just that. Buy it. Hey, I don't think we've ever like bought a movie and just like been like, hey, if you want to come over and watch it. We have done for we've some done it reason. In a hotel. There's been like a hey, like I- I'm gonna finish watching this movie at your yeah, place yeah, or yeah. something. That's just like before, like I didn't get a chance to finish it before we were recording the podcast about this thing. Yeah. So I'll just watch the rest of it here. Uh no, but we the last time that we bought a movie and watched together was Mamma Mia at in Austin, Texas. The best. Got snacks at a gas station and just they couldn't had sell like us a, beer, so had we had like, like a twelve-year-old sleepover to watch Mamma Mia too. It was we're unbelievable. Having, we're having fucking soda instead. Uh, yeah, this is a big movie episode because we all saw a bunch of movies that we loved, and neither of us have seen the other one. <laughs> yeah. I saw Theater Camp, which is the funniest shit I've seen possibly in my life, mm-hmm. uh, and I saw Bottoms, which holy fuck, I really don't know what you're gonna think of Bottoms. I think it's gonna maybe be uh bodies 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 okay. all over again in that like i know it's not a perfect movie but it's fucking crazy and outrageous and it has rachel senate and uh io Adibari is fucking hilarious in it and it's got cindy crawford's kid and it's like a movie that you in the beginning of it you're gonna be like oh some of this is unrealistic and then 15 minutes later, you're like, keep getting less and less <laughs> realistic. See how fucking crazy this can okay. get. And it just gets fucking insane. I mean, you absolutely loving a Rachel Senate movie that takes big swings. What a shock. Yeah. And so uh, there are scenes in this movie where you're like, I think I've done another take of that. Like, it's not like uh, Senate is putting on some acting masterclass. She's just fucking so funny. Okay. That. <laughs> It's uh, I th- this just seems like a good time. I saw Gooch from uh, Lights Camera podcast said that it's got some super bad qualities, and it for sure does. Like those two are very much uh, any high school movie that has like two people, whether it's two guys or two girls, is always going to be like kind of super bad. Same yeah. thing happened with Booksmart. Yeah, right. But Senate is very much the Jonah Hill character. We were okay. like. This character is funny, uh, but I would love to meet this character <laughs> and be like, 
You're a fucking asshole <laughs> to everybody. Quit looking at, like look out for anybody other than yourself. But yeah, I can't wait for you to see it. And okay. man, theater camp was so so fucking funny. Even though I had rotten kids in my theater, I did Ooh. see it at. Uh, you've ever been to Somerville Theater? Uh, yes, I actually saw uh, the canceled uh, oh. Dave, Ch- uh, not Dave Chappelle, uh, Louis C.K. at the Somerville Theater. Uh, or was that the Arlington Theater? No, so y- y- this is, uh, there's a theater in Davis that uh, is, you're not going to know the street names, right? No. Uh, so there's one that's like, there's a movie theater that's like right next to the T, and then there's a theater theater like an actual theater for performances and stuff okay. that is near the restaurants i think oh, that yeah, you yeah. saw it at the latter what's the name of the place in davis i think one is called davis theater i and swear one... it was called the somerville theater let me see davis but you're right theater. it was like a theater theater like a performance theater uh somerville oh well, you're right there's the Okay, the Rockwell is the one that I was thinking of. But if you saw it at the Somerville Theater, the there's Somerville also theater. like stuff for performances. Yeah, yeah there okay. was, it was the Somerville Theater. So uh, Somerville Theater is might be my favorite like movie theater. It's a good vibe. Yeah. Like, it's like an old school. Old as fuck, yeah. but everything is new inside yeah. there. The concessions hit. You they, get still, some they, got like, they got a marquee outside, a big old marquee. When I was younger... It was a big deal that I could walk to the movies, get a beer, and watch a movie. I thought, like, I thought yeah, that right. it was like this massive fucking life hack. And now, uh, by the way, I went to, I saw Bottoms at uh, the theater that had the uh, James Ransone guy. Yeah. And he wasn't not there. He was there. Oh, hell yeah. His fine ass. Did you get a just, drink? I didn't, but there was, a, there was one guy at the bar, and I was like... Love to be that guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Because he was like, they were talking, and I was like, this guy ain't done preparing for this role. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, past lives. Uh, I'm very much I, looking forward to you seeing Bottoms and Theater Camp. Yeah, I'm excited to see those. Uh, past lives is like, is it's a twenty four. It's for sure going to end up on my best of the year lists, like pretty close to the top. Uh, it's so good, and it's like doesn't do anything that is outrageous it's just a story about like two people who like had a crush on each other kind of like had some time apart and like it's just sort of like this like love story but in a way that is like so realistic and raw and like human it's incredible it's a movie I think I would guarantee that you are going to fucking love this movie because every character is like a real raw character. Yeah, I think that I have it planned for Monday morning. Okay. I think that I'm going to start my week that way. Start it, your week with love. Prepare to ta- prepare to think about it for the rest of your week because it, it was like one of those movies that like I just kept thinking about for like four days. Fucking love it, that. It looks amazing. The performances are unbelievable. Uh, like the writing again is amazing. All the characters are just like real people. It's a five out of five across the board for me. It's so fucking good. There's no way to say this without it sounding condescending, but I fucking love when you love a movie. Yeah, like, I mean, when, same. like you yeah. like have. But because I I know like when you really like something when you're like that was really good or whatever. Uh, but like certain movies, I mean, obviously there are movies that you'll hound me about because you're like this is really fucking good. See it. Obviously, Wind River. Finally watched it with my parents, and we were all like, "Yo, did DJ fucking call it or what?" Like <laughs> high five my parents. Like good recommendation, DJ. Uh, but like I remember when you first saw uh Juliet Naked. Yeah, I was, and that was like a. I don't know if I, I think that now, if I saw Juliet naked, I would know with confidence like you're gonna fucking love this. Yeah, maybe because I know that you love that movie. But like, I, th- I think that at the time I was like, I don't know if it'll quite be your speed, but like, check it out. And you were like, that's the most important thing I've ever seen in my <laughs> yeah, life. Yeah, the movie rocks. I I put that uh, somebody uh somebody was asking me for like my favorite like easy watches mm-hmm. and like rom coms of the past ten years or whatever it was, and I put Juliet naked 
very near the top. Like, it's not like a crazy, stupid love level for me, but Juliet Naked is either like a B plus, A minus tier rom com. I love the. That, that's such a good space for yes. movies, too. Yeah. Another one that I would put there, and this one doesn't get enough credit, is uh, Sleeping with Other People. Oh, with yeah. Jason Sudeikis yes. and Allison Brie. That's yeah. a great movie. Yeah, I like that one. Um, yeah, I would. Uh, I, if if I could own like ten movies, I used to own a lot of movies digitally, and they all went away. <laughs> and I was on the phone with Xfinity. I can say this now, uh, but I was like True. on the, the phone with them. And by the way, I have had a couple of experiences with cable that I never really. Maybe I did have these experiences, but I never thought like, oh, fucking cable company, blah blah. blah. And whenever people would complain about that stuff, I'd be like. Grow up. Not yeah. everything works all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. But now that I'm like really paying for it, like I used to have a that's true, pretty yeah. sweet discount. You now that I'm really slide. paying for it, I'm like actually noticing when it doesn't work. I'm like, this is appalling. Yeah, but for how much they charge for you, it should work all the time and work the best. Yeah. It's insane. Uh I'm also starting to realize now that I think like my favorite favorite movies the movies that you're talking about, like the ones that I get really, really excited about are just movies where like, it's like a rom-com, but like the two leads have like in incredible chemistry mm. and they, it's just like super sweet to watch. Like I texted you probably like 35 minutes into past lives. And I was like, this movie is incredibly sweet. I love the, I know that some people would do the like, uh, tweeting during a movie, texting during a movie, this sort of thing. Uh, one of my favorite moments in brunch history was uh, it was a Saturday morning. I was, I think, like the weather was nice. Uh, at the recommendation of Steve Conroy from the Boston Herald, he'd been on me for months about this movie. I finally fired up Sing Street. Oh, and ten minutes into it, oh yes, I texted you, Feidelberg, and Jeff, and was like, "Boys, I think Sing Street's gonna be a really good one." Just started it. And like fights was like on it. You were like cool. And I think that I, it, as I remember it, everybody. I think we all put it on it. Yes. right then. And then like the rest of the day, we were like, "How about Sing Street?" <laughs> <laughs> that was such a wild day to have four people in four different corners of the earth, aka New England, mm. uh, on a Saturday morning, nothing to do. We we're all just like, "Yeah, why not?" And like you weren't like, "Let's watch it together." You're just like, "I think this is gonna be a good one." We we're all like. Yeah, I'm doing that too. <laughs> I like that about you. I like that about fights. Jeff, I Jeff has a kid, uh, but uh, shout out Benny. It, it will happen more often than not that I'll that either I'll recommend or we'll get a recommendation from but one not of you immediately. guys, and I'll be like, you know what? Let me fire that up right now. Which <laughs> that doesn't happen all the time, uh, but I love like, hey, you should check this up. Okay. <laughs> watching somehow you end up ahead of me <laughs> on it yeah. yeah uh there are just some times though where like i want to like put it on record at a certain point in a movie that like i have this feeling about this movie whether i like love it whether i hate it whether i think it's gonna go somewhere like those are the times when i fire up a text and i'm like yo just to log it this movie's incredibly sweet and i love it i texted you you were seeing only the brave uh like an hour after oh I was seeing God. it, and like twenty five minutes into it, I texted you like, "Bad news, brother. This is the best movie." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I. It's so funny that like it's I like planting your flag in a movie. Like I like it. <laughs> I my I have terrible memory and I can't remember shit and everything's a haze for like ninety percent of my life. But when I get a text message like that, I remember exactly where I was when I got it. I remember like the weather. I remember where i was standing i remember i was about to open the door to the woburn uh showcase cinema when i got that text going to see only the brave and i was like hell yeah this is gonna be an experience <laughs> <laughs> i remember being like slightly hung over on the saturday morning uh it was a beautiful sunny day got a text message we're watching sing street so i was like i am hung over i would love to watch a movie right now i remember where i laid on my couch when i watched it i remember like all the feelings i had during that experience so uh it is very funny that like i can tie everything to a single text message people forget you saw mama mia here we go again before i did and it's true. that was a good text to get you're like 
It was incredible. <laughs> I love Lily James. I was like, I was incredible. Love John. <laughs> I was so in love with Lily James for like about two and a half years after seeing that movie. Which is funny. Uh, I saw Baby Driver. Mm -hmm. And I always forget that she was in there. Right. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm in love with uh, Al Gord El Gord. <laughs> Al Gord Al Gord El Gord. Ansel Elgort. I don't like I uh, love calling people's him names. Al Gore. Al Gore. <laughs> Al Gore Elgort. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I love that movie. One of my friends was like, yo. So uh, my pal Robbie Buckets hates everything. Baby Driver. Oh, really? well, he hates everything. You must hate everything yes. if you hate Baby Driver. But I was, he was like, it was just so clearly an excuse for him to just do that one scene where he plays bell bottoms. And I was like, yeah. And then he fucking made a whole more movie <laughs> i my favorite thing is robbie buckets being like we've seen a movie and, and like we both tweet about it and he's always like saw another movie together again no, didn't yeah. you and it's like we never see movies together yeah we just like see twice them right year. when they come out i love seeing a movie with you it's always so funny because like we don't know each other's like i'm not as familiar with your game as people would think when it comes to like seeing movies because we just don't do it all the time yeah if we go do anything i know what you're gonna order you know what i'm gonna get you know what i'm gonna say all these things it's all kind of old hat but like if we go to see a movie together maybe you'll be like uh, uh i'll be right back i'm gonna grab some twizzlers and i'll be like oh twizzlers huh yeah i mean like seeing you at a movie theater is like seeing you at like a train station where it's like <laughs> i know you but like we're not gonna we're not gonna fucking hang out right now. Yeah. We kinda did hung hang out though when we saw uh um the the baby one. The the uh, the, the brothers one. Yeah, the uh Thank you for your old <laughs> records. Yes. Uh uh Wind River, uh Wind Uh Casino Fuck uh Fuck. Casey Affleck. Yeah, what's said, that movie called? The Fantastic Bad Drummer Brothers. Uh, uh, Dream and Wild. Dream and Wild. There Good we go. Job. Got yeah, it. we were close. Um, right around it. We hung out because we showed up to that movie like two hours early for some reason. Every time I go to that theater, this happened again when I went to see Bottoms. I was there super early. Uh, I walked in. By the way, I walked in like as the previews were starting. There was like 13 couples there. I was the only person solo. There was one couple that was fucking doing a blanket together. Oh, okay. And it just like didn't what are you doing suck. under there? <laughs> you know, the, no, they they were fine. It was just like okay. like very they were very uh just cozy, but they weren't like fucking under there. <laughs> and I was like, this is nice. I mean, I I I like the idea of bringing a blanket to the movie theater. I bet it would feel like nice and and yeah. home, homey like, and like cozy. No but fucking. I, I would be worried that like people would look at me and be like, "What the fuck is that guy doing?" Should be like, "He's fucking under there." <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, I think the move is you either have to to have the movie schedule perfect. Like you show up and you sit down. the The previews are just ending. You, you skip the line, or you show up like an hour early and you get to make a a thing out of it. Showing up like twenty minutes early. That's the worst. What a nightmare. I did notice something a little troubling, and I don't want to say anything officially. When I got there, I went to get popcorn. They're looking very low on the popcorn. And I said, you out of popcorn? And they're like, please. No, they're never out of popcorn, We got brother. plenty. They go, they get another huge bag of it and pour it in, and I realized they're not making the popcorn there. Really? I don't think so. At least, tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe they're making it in the back or something, but... It's housed in. This is like a little trickery, the, like the fourteen gallon bag things, right? But it, but it's, it, you know, it's situated in the thing with like the little clear plastic door and everything yeah. that looks like they're probably popping popcorn in that thing. I think that's just a container. No, I, I mean I've it's seen like them, I've seen them making it at the Burlington AMC, our oh, home okay. theater. Like I've seen it spilling out of the top uh, and filling the the okay, receptacle. Because I remember like being like, "Yo, that is the fastest popping popcorn of all time." It was gonna crush my dreams if that were the thing. Because like a lot of times, if you go uh, to a show and a piano player has like a big piano up there, that's really just like a shell, okay. and they'll have like a Nord or a Yamaha thing that's in there that they can move. 
around or whatever. I was afraid of that, so I'm glad to hear that. Nah, so what I've witnessed. So they pop it, and do they supplement with these, like, backup bags, maybe? I mean, there could be a, a situation where, like, that theater doesn't do it with their machine or whatever. Mm. Or maybe it was not working for the time being. They needed repairs, so they just, like, imported a bunch of fucking popcorn. But I've I've for sure seen it being made at AMC before. The last thing I want to talk about. This has been a great episode, by the way. Sure has. It's like a good little friendship one. Uh, let me say uh, I got to find the receipt to make sure I'm not wrong on this. Uh, the Eras Tour movie is coming out, mm -hmm. and that's going to be a exciting thing for people who want to go to it. We've talked about like maybe do we go we we try to find a time where it wouldn't be too crazy. I asked Jim Murray, uh Jim Murray's big thing is he discusses how much money it would take for him to do certain things, to go to certain events. Uh and his answer on the Eras Tour movie was basically exactly mine, which is n don't have a problem with the content, it would be the crowd that would be tough there uh we should go to see the errors tour movie with jim murray and then podcast about it that'd be so fucking funny oh my god but here's the thing we don't have this in the brunch account right now he said uh he said the the content isn't fine i'd check that out it's the crowd i'd worry about that said nice theater plush seats snacks even five grand gets me there Oh, come Which on. normally he's asking for like, like high like if the if there's like a band he really doesn't like, I'm so glad that we don't have money because I would be like, yo, do we give him five grand to do this with us? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that's coming to theaters and, uh, stop making sense. The 1984 concert film from uh, the Talking Heads, which is the best concert film ever for my money. I put it ahead of. I know that What's It Called is more of a doc, The Last Waltz, but, like, number one for me, stop making sense. It's fucking incredible. A24 is putting it in theaters, and they've swooped it up, and they've done all this cool new stuff to it, and then after... To... Uh, the stop making sense. Okay. The Talking okay. Heads one. Okay. And after, there's, they're doing a lot... After they show it, they're doing a live Q&A from the Toronto Film Festival with the Talking Heads, and if you know anything about the Talking Heads... It's that there's David Byrne and then three people who are like, we don't like that guy. <laughs> uh, but they're all getting together and they're going to do a and a And it's this big thing and A24 is involved. So a uh, friend gave me a heads up like, hey, tickets are on sale for that. And uh, it's probably going to sell out. So you should grab a ticket. A few weeks ago, I bought a ticket. It's this coming Monday. How much do you think the ticket is for to watch this movie? The Talking Heads? Yeah. Uh, eighty dollars. It did. They did not let me. And this is AMC. Yeah. Did not let me use. Yeah, you can't use your uh, A list thing for stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Oh, that's actually that's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I think that's kind of crazy. It's like a it's a live thing. Mm -hmm. So like they're they're only doing one showing of true, it. Yeah. So they gotta make their money. I, it's an event. I checked the Taylor Swift one. Yeah. $25. Really? That doesn't make much sense to me because, like, it's a run, right? Like, it's yeah. not like a one-time thing. It's going to be in theaters for what, like a week? Uh, I don't know how long it's going to be in there, but... It's 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 definitely not like one live showing. Yo, I'm, I'm glad... Swifties, I'm glad you're happy to give her the money. But, man, she has so she much money. She fucking crushes you guys. She has so much she money. She smokes you guys. With the fucking Taylor's version shit, yeah, you guys are getting taken for a ride Taylor with Swift. those physical copies, my fam. Taylor Swift, I, I did buy the 1989 physical copy. I'm a, I'm a sucker. Wait, the, the physical copy of the, the real one? What? Like, no, no, you have like the Max's version. Yeah, but I bought, I bought the Taylor's version just like I pre-ordered it. Because I, it was like a special edition one that she put on sale for like 24 hours. So I just fucking went for it. It's going to suck, dude. I know. And I'm still going to want it. I'm still going to want it. How can you? So I've, I've gone through uh, some uh, Taylor Swift stuff recently. And some of like the, the Fearless stuff 
sounds good. Like I prefer the 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 Taylor's version of Mean. Yeah. But anything that she did with like Max Martin or anything, the Taylor's version sounds six million fucking times worse. I know, but 1989 is like one of my favorite albums in recent memory. And like, even if it's a bad version of that, I think I'm just gonna want it as like a keepsake. <laughs> oh my god! So I, I'm so against that. I understand that I'm being I'm being took. Like yes. I I totally understand that, and, and again, I'm okay with it. I'll explain the uh, the reason these Taylor's version things are being made is because uh, somebody else owns her music. She didn't buy it. She wanted to. It didn't happen. Um, so now somebody else owns it. So she's re-recording it. So if you stream it or if it gets used in a TV show a la The Bear, she can sell them that version and she gets paid for it. Cool. Here's where it becomes bullshit. She's selling physical copies of it. So people like Pete who already own this mm -hmm. are now buying a thing that they weren't going to buy anyway. You weren't going to go buy a second copy of 1989. But... Now her fans are buying second physical copies of stuff where that was never going to exist. These other people weren't going to fucking make money off of you buying a second copy of something you already owned. So that's where it's a fucking racket. But if, yeah, I'm okay if you're with willing being to do yeah, right, like if you, I, I am gladly took on a lot of things. Like yeah. if somebody were like, hey, this Father John Misty show you're seeing, uh, your ticket is $50, but for $300, you can be one row closer i'd be like oh daddy yeah <laughs> it's like if it's something that's important to you and you've got the money and it's not gonna like I put just, you under yeah go for it uh it's fine uh also i am very very annoyed by the pricing of this taylor swift thing now uh i'm telling you it's a good talker base prices start at 1989 for adults and 1313 for children as a birth year and her luck as a reflection of her birth year and lucky number 13 like doing cute shit like that doesn't count as cute when you're just doing it to make more money i as you said that i kid you not i've never had this sensation before i like saw the bullet from a sniper <laughs> coming in and just fucking taking me out <laughs> You know how many just you know ending many, like, my fucking life families are gonna get that. fucked by that because they have to bring like three kids and like an adult to that thing? It's gonna be like a hundred dollars at the movie theater. I went to see Paddington two with some kids uh, a couple weeks ago. So did you? Uh, you know how much it costs for the kids? Zero dollars. And I think it costs like one dollar for the adults. Two dollars. And you know what's better than nineteen eighty nine tour? Or I'm sorry, the Eras tour. Paddington 2 for Paddington like the 19th two. time. It's going to be like a fucking crazy ass haircut scene in that. I guess like maybe this is a little bit more annoying to us than it is to like regular, quote unquote, regular normies or whatever is because we have A-list and we could just use this. But like, I guess it's not that much more expensive uh, than like a movie than seeing a movie. But still, that's that's fucked. And it's it's set to run uh, Thursday through Sunday. So it's a whole weekend run. I guarantee you it is going to go longer than that because they're going to make so much fucking money on opening weekend. They're going to extend it, and then people that I follow on Twitter... We'll see it like a, for a third No, term. are going to be like, how is she doing this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't she sleep? And she's, I'm like, she's not going to be there. She's saving movie theaters. I, that I actually don't hate. I want to do it. So <laughs> like, that's Tom our next Cruise fake thing. reel. That's our next fake reel. Like, is Taylor Swift saving? Oh yes, theaters? we absolutely have to do that. Uh, what can be the Oppenheimer to uh, the Eras tour? Oh, I mean, the, the stop making sense should go in against that, and it's just like a bunch of fucking cool bros <laughs> going to see that. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I guess you could do that. Uh, that's that would be. Is it opening the same weekend? No, this is uh, okay. Monday. You got to do something that's opening the same weekend. So what comes out? That we'll have to figure it out as we get closer to it. But like doing a Taylor Swift Oppenheimer situation, be like, oh, she fucking crushed it. She's saving movies. Yeah, and we should do like she's saving movies, and then just Photoshop her head over like Tom Cruise. Mm. I did think about getting you a ticket for Stop Making Sense because you haven't seen it, correct? No. But you have seen David Byrne, and you've been like, it's well, a what's cult. going on there? That's a cult, yeah. yeah. It's, it has the like the cultiest vibe of any musical performance I've ever seen. Well, you, So you saw uh, he did his American Utopia show. Uh, 
in that looks very cultish because everybody's wearing the same thing same and they're thing. all wearing it's like a monochromatic everyone's wearing gray everyone's barefoot and like like Everything every, is every everybody other than him is sweating profusely that's right we saw it at Lollapalooza, right or austin, austin city, city limits austin we were city very limits. distracted by like the one guy he, who was like the sweatiest person of all time sweating through his his gray suit yeah we're like why man that's such a tough color yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, a poor bastard it has to do this for david byrne uh yeah i mean it's definitely culty uh but i would say i was gonna get you a ticket to see stop making sense uh i've watched that a million times usually uh while on pot and i don't really do, pot, do that uh these days but uh couldn't be me brother. say like <laughs> I, well, I was thinking of bringing gummies to go see it, but pot in a movie theater, I wouldn't smoke it there, but I'm saying like being high in a movie theater sounds like it could feel bad. No, I've done it before. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Popped a couple gummies before a movie theater. It's, I mean, like, if you're in... If you're in like it, a closed it, place. If, yeah, if it's the right situation, it's chill. I mean, pot plus stop making sense feels... Uh, uh, amazing oh i'll leave you all with this because uh someone did this that it's i've been recommending it forever i don't know if they chose the pot option but uh smoke some pot if you do that take your whatever prescribed amount uh put on a fun album just think about what the world would be like if jack antonoff was just doing that and didn't ruin lord see you saturday